Hello everybody, I'm Chef James from Ironstone Vineyards again. Uh, we're going to do Chef Chat. Again, this is our fourth course I think now. And today, since we're having such cold weather out, we're going to talk about stews because this is a great uh, food item to eat during cold weather and it's easy. So let's just start right into it. So let's talk about ingredients for our stews. Now we can use any types of vegetables in, in your stews, but the main types of vegetables that are in most stews are celery, white or yellow onion, carrots, and mushrooms. So let's talk about these. When we prepare your vegetables for your stew, what you're going to want to do is you're not going to want to cut them up into small pieces because these are going to be cooking or braising in your stew pot for maybe an hour, maybe two hours, maybe three hours, depending on the cut of meat that you use. We'll talk about that later. So you want to cut your, your vegetables into larger pieces so they'll withstand the, the long cooking and the high temperatures that are going to uh, be happening in that pan. So you probably want to cut your vegetables maybe three-quarter inch by three-quarter inch square or inch by inch square depending on what you're going to be using. Mushrooms like this, you probably would just want to put in there whole or half, okay? If you cut them too small, they're going to disintegrate over time and then all you're going to be left with is kind of like a mush, right? Nobody wants to eat mush, at least I don't. Alright, so now let's get into the meats. Now when you're choosing your meats, you can, you can choose chicken, beef, pork, fish, any types of protein that you want. Now again with the proteins you're going to want to cut them into larger pieces. Now the proteins are probably going to be cut into inch and a half by inch and a half square pieces. Okay, And you're going to want to use cuts of meat that are tougher. Tough, tough cuts of meat come from like legs and the shoulders and such like a pork butt or a beef roast that you would find in the store or chicken breast or chicken thigh meat would be great. So remember, cut them into larger pieces because overcooking, over the cooking time, they're going to, you know, break down, and you don't want them disintegrated or nothing. You want the big, big, nice chunks of meat in there. Uh, let's talk about flavorings. We have, you can use any number of flavorings you want in stews. Uh, good ones are fresh herbs, right? I like using fresh sage, and I like using fresh thyme. Other good ones are marjoram and uh, oregano. Herbs like rosemary you probably wouldn't want to use because it's really woody and tough. Even when you chop it up really, really fine, you're going to get little bits of that herb in your stew and you're going to be tasting them and chewing on them. You get stuck in your teeth and you're really not going to like that, okay? Other things, salt, pepper, of course. Um, dried bay leaves are a good thing. Be careful with the dried bay leaves. They're really, really potent, although you may smell them. They're not going to really taste or smell but potent, but when you braise with them or cook with them, they're going to be very potent. So use like one or two of them. Uh, dried spices, dried herbs, you can use any number or any amount that you want, just don't get too overboard. Another great thing in stews is wine, red wines or white wines. Uh, I would use red wines if you were going to be using beef or pork, and I would use white wines if you were going to use uh, chicken or maybe just a vegetarian stew. Okay. Uh, one of the last components is your liquid, and you're going to want to use stock, chicken stock, beef stock, or vegetable stock if you're making a vegetable stew. Uh, you can use water if you want, but the stocks tend to lend more flavor to your stew. So cooking process here. So we're going to go over some cooking processes. The first thing you want to do is you're going to want to brown your meat, because browning your meat in your pan creates flavor. Caramelization on that meat is going to create flavor, and then you're going to have all this nice sticky stuff on the bottom of the pan that the French call fond, okay, and that's all a lot of flavor too. And you want to get that flavor off the bottom of the pan. So after you're done browning your meat, you want to take your good old wine, you want to pour it in there, and it starts bubbling up and it may catch fire, so be careful. But scrape the bottom of the, that, that pan after you pour your liquid in there. Uh, you're going to get all those nice flavors out. And then what I usually do is I usually pour off that liquid and the meat, and then I start sautéing my vegetables. So then you would start sautéing your celery, your onion, your carrots, your mushrooms. Sauté those a little bit. They don't have to brown. Just get them heated up, get them wilted a little bit, and then you want to add everything back into the pan, okay, along with your wine and your herbs. And this isn't science, okay, folks? This is just, it's called one-pot cookery. You put everything into one pot, you put the lid on, you turn it on about medium, medium low, and you let it simmer. You just want to see little bubbles coming up. You don't want a, a rolling boil like this. You just want little bubbles coming up. If you don't see bubbles, turn your heat up, okay, because you want it bubbling a little bit. And cooking times vary. 
Okay, if you're going to use chicken, it's not going to cook as long as beef or pork. So you want to cook it maybe an hour, maybe two hours. A good uh, way to try is just keep testing that meat, right? If the meat starts shredding, that means it's done. You want tender meat. There's nothing worse than biting into a big chunk of chewy meat you want to chew on all day long. All you don't want to do is spit it out. So let that stuff cook. Um, let's reverse a little bit. I forgot a point is you're cooking liquid, your beef stock, chicken stock, and your wine. When you initially start your stew, you're going to want probably a good inch, inch and a half of liquid over all your ingredients because over that cooking time, the liquid is going to evaporate, right? And then if, it, if you don't put too much liquid in, it's going to get dry and may, you may burn it. But if you make a mistake, you don't put enough liquid in, just add some more hot liquid to it as it's cooking. Now the last thing you're going to want to do before you uh, serve your stew, maybe 10 or 15 minutes before it's done, is add about, I don't know, a quarter cup, half a cup of tomato paste into there. And stir it up and make sure it breaks up. That's going to add flavor, it's going to add a depth of flavor, and it's going to also act to thicken your stew. Okay? So I think we've covered everything about stews. Stews are a good way to throw leftovers if you have them into it. You don't have to use fresh pork or fresh, if you've got chicken left over from the night before and some vegetables, throw it all in there, cook it up, it becomes a stew, right? It's real easy, real easy way to just, you know, you get home from work, throw everything in your pot, put some liquid over it and let it, you know, cook, braise while you are, you know, getting the kids ready for bed or whatever. It's really, really easy. So please try it. We're going to post a recipe. It's going to be a chipotle braised pork, one of my recipes. Uh, please try that. Really, really great uh, stew. And again, folks, I check the website on a daily basis. So if you have any questions, please leave a comment down at the bottom. And I'll uh, get back to it as soon as we can. Okay, so um, that's it for today. See you guys later.